There are a lot of attractions at Magic Kingdom. You're probably not gonna get to do them all during your trip. So here are the 11 best ones we think you shouldn't skip, especially if you're a first timer. Everybody is going to feel their own kind of way about the top rides at Magic Kingdom, and that is fine with us. We are here to share the ones we believe are the best of the best at Walt Disney World theme park in Magic Kingdom specifically. Keep in mind that a great attraction doesn't have to be a thrill ride or super fast. We have a combination of slow moving nostalgic attractions that have a lot of Disney goodness baked in, as well as th more thrilling rides. This list is not a ranking, but simply our opinions of what we believe are the best 11 rides at Magic Kingdom. Let's head to Adventureland and start with Pirates of the Caribbean. This is an eight and a half minute gentle boat ride through a Caribbean city of pirates. It has over 125 animatronics, including three Jack Sparrows, so be on the lookout for those. You cannot beat this one. You can find different versions of the ride in multiple Disney theme parks across the globe. While it may be better at some parks compared to others, you can't really go wrong with this little boat ride that takes you through the Caribbean alongside untrustworthy pirates. Some of the reasons we love this ride are that it doesn't have height requirement so anyone can ride it. It has just enough thrill for little ones and those who don't like roller coasters. There is one drop, but it's not too bad. You can spot Captain Jack Sparrow a few times, which can make for a fun game when riding with kids. It features an empowered female character, Red the Pirate. The queue is covered and inside, which is perfect on hot days and if it's raining. You won't likely get motion sick on this ride. And there is a really extensive gift shop attached that you will go through as you exit that sells exclusive Pirates of the Caribbean souvenirs. This ride is something we recommend that you ride within the first two or last two hours of the day, or you can do it anytime with Genie Plus, and it is not open during early entry. Let's head right next to Pirates of the Caribbean to the Jungle Cruise. This is a river raft ride where animatronic animals and corny jokes abound. Every Jungle Cruise skipper has a routine with jokes, so every ride is a little bit different. If you happen to have a little one, make sure you let them know ahead of time that the animals are all pretend just in case. This is a classic attraction which has funny cast members and it allows you to go on a boat while hearing jokes and taking an exotic journey across Asia, Africa, and South America. There are several reasons that we love the Jungle Cruise, including the fact that there isn't a height requirement, so anyone can ride. The Jungle Cruise skippers do make you laugh and interact with you, which adds to the fun. There is a dark scene through a cave, but overall, this is a really kid-friendly ride, and kids usually love looking at the animatronic animals. The ride has its own restaurant, which is Skipper Canteen, which is located very close by, and it is one of the best table service spots in the park. The two go together very well. And during the holidays, the ride gets its own holiday overlay and transforms from Jungle Cruise into Jingle Cruise. This does last for about 10 minutes, we recommend that you ride during the first or last hours or any time with Genie Plus. Sometimes those lightning lanes are tough to get, so make sure you snag it earlier in the day. Now let's leave Adventureland and head over to Frontierland where we want to get on Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. This is a great coaster for people who are working up the nerve to do the bigger coasters. The theming is Old West style and there are lots of mountains and caverns to make your way through. There are no big drops like the big scary coasters, but there are some fun dips and twists that can lift you out of your seat. There are lots of reasons that we love this attraction. First of all, it's just fun. It's one of the best roller coasters at Disney World. Some of us may even think it's the best mountain. Maybe, maybe not. While there is a height requirement, it isn't one of the taller ones. It may be intense at times, but it is usually a good introductory one for a bigger thrill ride. The outdoor part of the queue can get hot during those warmer temps, but once the line goes inside, it has several hands-on mining inspired inline activities that are great for little ones. There is an outdoor viewing area for non-riders to watch the family and friends as they whiz by on the runaway train. And this roller coaster has a hidden Tinkerbell at the exit of the attraction. Look to your left, you'll see an H crack in the rock and it's actually Tink. You really have to look at it, but it resembles her profile and you can even see her bun at the top of her head. This does have a 40 inch height requirement and lasts about three minutes. We recommend that you try to ride it in the first hour or last hour of the day or any time if you can get a Genie Plus Lightning Lane selection. It is not open during early entry. You might want to try riding it during the fireworks at night for a fun and special experience. Let's head over to Liberty Square and ride 
by the Haunted Mansion. This is a tour of various ghost-filled rooms of a mansion. On your way to board your ride vehicle, you'll first go through an octagon-shaped room that appears to stretch. This will forever be a Magic Kingdom staple. It's spooky, fun, and friendly all at once, minus the moment in the stretching room, which can scare some little ones, but it is one ride we cannot get enough of, and we will always hurry <sighs> The reasons that we love the Haunted Mansion include that it can have a hot queue during the higher temperatures, but it is a fun and interactive queue, including the elements in the cemetery section. When you exit the ride, make sure you look to your left and check out the pet cemetery. You can see a marker for Mr. Toad. The stretching room features one of the most famous attraction pre-shows. Is it actually stretching or is it your imagination? At the end of the first hallway, make sure you pose in front of the Medusa portrait for a fun on-ride photo pass. Speaking of photo pass, don't forget to get your photo taken in front of the Haunted Mansion. It makes for a spooktacular photo op. While there are darker moments that could scare little ones, there also isn't a height requirement, meaning anyone can ride. The queue has its own murder mystery that you can solve courtesy of the Dread Family Bus. This ride does last about 10 minutes. We recommend that you go there in the first two or last two hours of the day or anytime with the Genie Plus Lightning Lane selection. It is not open during early entry, but we do recommend that you find a way to ride it sometime during your day. Let's head to Fantasyland and to It's a Small World, which is a gentle boat ride that takes you through scenery that includes animatronic dolls set in different countries. Try not to get the song stuck in your head, but it's almost impossible. Apologize in advance. This may not be the most exciting of all the rides at Magic Kingdom, but it is one of the original rides that started it all thanks to Walt Disney himself, and it even debuted on the opening day of Magic Kingdom. It is our favorite for a few reasons. It is a ride that sends a good message and represents different cultures. It is family friendly and perfect for little ones of all heights. It's a longer ride, so it can be a great way to escape the heat and rain and rest your feet. It now features a doll in a wheelchair. As Disney World said, this allows even more guests and cast members to see themselves and their loved ones depicted in the experience. And right after you set sail on the ride, you can look at the windows up above to wave to guests eating at Pinocchio Village House. This attraction does take about 13 minutes after you board, and we recommend that you ride it in the first two or last two hours of the day or during early theme park entry. You can also book it through Genie Plus if you want to have a quick service meal, you can head to Pinocchio Village House and go to the room that has the windows overlooking the ride so that you can wave to the passengers as they set sail. Next, let's head to Peter Pan's Flight, which is very close to It's a Small World and also in Fantasyland. This is one of the most popular attractions in all of Magic Kingdom. Waits build quickly and will remain long throughout the day. It's a cute ride that transports you to Neverland and tells the story of Peter Pan, the Darlings, and Captain Hook in a succinct and magical way. The ride vehicles are suspended from the top and glide glide over the charming scenery in the dark. Although the ride does mostly take place in the dark, it doesn't typically scare little ones. We like this attraction because it is all around fun and charming and kids will absolutely love it. Plus it doesn't have any high requirement. The ride vehicles are perfectly themed to look like pirate ships. Your safety lap bar gets pulled down with some help from quote unquote pixie dust. It's pure magic. The queue has the best interactive elements like watching your shadow come to life and bells that appear on the wall that you can play for real. You can also meet Peter Pan next to the ride in front of the map of Neverland. As I mentioned, this is a popular ride, so we recommend that you visit during the first or last hour of the day or book a Genie Plus Lightning Lane selection. It is also available during early theme park entry. We think it's a good use of that time. If you don't want to miss the very interactive queue, you might want to skip the Lightning Lane option here. Another popular ride in Fantasyland is Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. This is an easy coaster with about the same intensity as Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, but obviously done with the theme of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It is not an original Mountain of Magic Kingdom. It's one of the newer attractions, but it is a popular ride for good reason. Where else can you board a mine car that swings and then take off and up and down the hills? While we do wish this attraction was a little bit longer, it is still a great time, particularly for young ones that are getting used to roller coasters. And it's the perfect way to celebrate Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs.
yours. Some of the reasons we love this attraction are that the cars on the ride vehicle swing back and forth, just like a mine car. And this is the first of their kind. There are a lot of Easter eggs here. First, the Snow White, Seven Doris, and Evil Queen animatronics at the very end of the ride are also from the original Snow White Scary Adventures attraction. The two vultures you see at the top of the mountain once you pull out of the loading area are also from the Snow White Dark Ride. The queue is interactive, allowing guests to sort jewels, wash gems with water spigots, and turn barrels filled with glowing stones. The line contains a replica of the dwarf's home, which you can see even better as you exit. And the ride takes you through the mine along Inside the dwarfs and it's one of the prettiest scenes thanks to all the gems that are brightly lit up. There is a height requirement here of 38 inches. It does last only about three minutes. We recommend that you visit during the first hour or last hour during early theme park entry or you can buy an individual lightning lane to ride it here. Head to this ride right when the park opens or especially if you're there for early theme park entry because the queue does build quickly. Now let's head to Main Street USA for the Walt Disney World Railroad. It was gone for so long and now that it's back, I think we love it even more than before. This is a steam train that takes guests on a loop around all of Magic Kingdom. There are three stops. One is at the front of the park on Main Street in Fantasyland, back by Storybook Circus, and in Frontierland that is near Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. We love trains, so it's a great way to honor Walt and his love of trains. It serves as the perfect in-park transportation. It's a mellow attraction and a way to see unique views of the park and so much more. We love it because in addition to the station on Main Street, you can find one in two other lands, so it makes it easier to kind of get around. It is a great attraction to ride if you have a little one that needs to rest since you can stay on it as long as you would like. You can get on and off of it at any stop so it's also a good way to save some steps and the train offers different views of the park and also has narration themed to each land as you pass through. This one takes about 20 minutes if you want to do the whole loop but you can get off at any stop if you would like. It's a great time filler that we recommend that you do anytime during the day. It does not have a lightning lane, it's not open during early entry but it is a great anytime attraction that you you can visit anytime throughout your day. Now let's head to Tomorrowland, which we haven't talked about at all yet, starting with Space Mountain. This is an indoor roller coaster that takes place in the dark. It does not go upside down, but it has lots and lots of intense drops and quick turns. It is an oldie, but a goodie, and we can't get enough of it. It's definitely a thrill ride, even though it doesn't go upside down, it's definitely a thrill ride. And we have a lot of reasons why we like it. It's an all around solid thrill ride that still holds up after all the years. It's been open since 19. 75. Even though it's in the dark for the most part, there are still aspects that make you feel as you're in space. The coaster travels above the people mover, which is very cool to us. The queue has some of the best music and so does Tomorrowland in general. During Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, Space Mountain receives a special holiday overlay that includes interstellar lighting and high energy holiday tunes. It is a ride with a 44 inch height requirement. So you will, not everyone will be able to ride, but many people will. It lasts about three minutes minutes. We recommend that people ride in the first or last hour. It is available during early theme park entry or you may want to consider booking a lightning lane for it. One tip that we have is that you might want to play the Play Disney Parks app because they're interactive games that you can do while waiting in the queue. Staying in Tomorrowland and heading right next to Space Mountain, let's talk about Tron Light Cycle Run, which is new, but likely going to be a future classic. It is a coaster style attraction that allows guests to hop on a train of two wheeled light cycles, just like in the movies. You will go as fast as 60 miles an hour in fact, it's one of the fastest coasters at any Disney theme park in the world. It is really thrilling, but overall pretty smooth. We do put it up at the level of Rock and Roller Coaster or Cosmic Rewind in terms of intensity. And there are several reasons that we really love it. First of all, it's fast, exciting, and intense all at once. You literally get to ride motorcycle style ride vehicles that is part of a roller coaster, which makes this attraction super unique. We would be remiss if we didn't mention that the ride vehicles are a little bit awkward, and that's because both your back and calves are strapped in while your chest lays flat, but it is still fun. There is an accessible ride vehicle for those who can't or don't want to hop on the cycle. The queue's theming is spot on, and you will feel as if you're part of the grid. Tron adds a whole new level to Tomorrowland that's been needed for a very long time. The area is 
itself spectacular, including the music. We want to listen to it on a loop. This attraction does have a 48 inch height requirement, which is gonna exclude a lot of younger kids. We do recommend that you use a virtual queue or individual lightning lane selection to board it. It lasts for about two minutes. And even though it is relatively short, it is very, very thrilling. And we save the best for last, the Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover. If we had to pick one attraction, that is our favorite. And sometimes the only ride we'll ride during a trip, it is the People Mover. It is a 10 minute long laid back tour of Tomorrowland. It literally moves people around in a car that travels on a track around Tomorrowland at a decent speed while giving guests the chance to see both the land and park in a whole new way. We love it for a lot of reasons, starting with the fact that it provides awesome views of Space Mountain, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, Cinderella Castle, now Tron and more. It is relaxing. You can literally put your feet up and chill for a little while. It does feel like a little different right at night because you can see the entire park lit up. It's just so pretty. This is the best and most unique way to see Tomorrowland. It can kind of give you a tour of it before you even go on any of the attractions if you want to. There are usually fairly low wait times. Even if the line is long, it will move quickly. This does not have a height requirement and we don't suggest that you ride it at any particular time of the day, but sometimes the first three hours and last three hours can have the lowest weights. There are no lightning lanes here. It is open during early entry. One thing to look out for is when Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor lets out, those crowds often head over there, which can temporarily inflate the lines, but usually the line will move really quickly. So that is it. Our favorite 11 Magic Kingdom rides. Is there one that would be on your list that wasn't on our list? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching. Thank you.